Good morning. Good morning. Today we celebrate the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Planted in the house of the Lord, we proclaim God's goodness day and night. My name is Diane Siever. Sarah Detmer and I will proclaim the word. Alicia Bonelli is our cantor. Please silence all cell phones. Our gathering hymn is all our welcome. Let us place ourselves in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As Dickens said, my name is Father Charles. I'm working with Father Dan at Blessed Sacrament. I'm originally from Nigeria, but ordained last year by Bishop Ed. So I'm just a pandemic priest. <laughs> In today's gospel reading, Jesus Christ tells us to allow our faith to grow like mustard seed by loving God and by loving our fellow human being. In those moments, we find it hard to have a very good relationship with God. We ask God for pardon. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Glory to God on highest, and on earth is the Lord. Of good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty King, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take, take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the only one. 
Lord. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strengthen of those who hope in you. Graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our days. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged things in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear, and when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, 
he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. Whenever I'm in a new parish, like a parish I have not been before, to celebrate Mass, it always reminds me of when I came to America newly. You know, when I came to America in 2015, my English was bad. <laughs> <laughs> that time I would speak English, people would be saying to me, hmm, 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 what is this? <laughs> so I find it hard to communicate, you know, to my friends because I'm afraid they will say, hmm, hmm, hmm. So, so when I'm, now I'm a priest, so when I come to new parish, to celebrate Mass, I will say in my mind, I hope these people will not say, hmm, 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 <laughs> But I know the Holy Spirit will help us to understand because some of the parish, the parish I'm with right now, Blessed Sacrament, when you talk to them, often, you know, they will know how you talk and they will know how to get your information. So have patience with me. I love one of the sayings of St. Francis. You know, St. Francis always say, be, be big in little things. One of the ways of hearing that saying is to say, to do small, ordinary tasks of life with a loving and generous heart. It also reminds me of St. Teresa, you know, he always, she always said this, do small things in an extraordinary way. And she did her things, whether it is small, but she will put it in with an extraordinary way. Doing, doing, doing her things with love, with joy, and also put it a very big smile, despite how small it is. Doing small things, small things we think that it doesn't matter, can matter a lot. That was what we can learn from St. Teresa of Avila. She, was, she came from a poor background, a Canaanite monk, but she is very, very faithful, with full of joy and loving heart. In today's gospel reading, remind us about St. Francis' sayings that be big in small things. Jesus, in two parables, the deacon read for us today, revealed to us about the mystery of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is too large, but for us human beings, we may understand it as small things. It doesn't matter. That is why Jesus Christ always talked to us about this kingdom of God where we can have our internal rest when we pass in this world. You know, I always tell the people that, which is true, all of us are in the journey, in the journey of passing this world. But we don't want to hear this, but this is true. One day we'll be with God in heaven, which is the kingdom of God. And Jesus Christ always reminds us about entering in this kingdom of God. Even as he starts his public ministry, he always says, the kingdom of God is at hand. And the kingdom of God is at hand came when came present, when he healed the sick, when he forgives sin, when he shared with the table with those rejected, when he brings his love to all of us, to those he come contact with. When he gather a new community to teach them about the love of God, that, that means that the kingdom of God is at hand. And Jesus intended that the kingdom of God will continue in this world through the community of believers. So when we gather together with love, in friendship, to give honor to God, we know that the kingdom of God is present with us. No wonder Jesus Christ 
in the Lord's prayers always say, let the kingdom of God come. That simply means that God wants us to have peace. God wants us to say this prayer so that when the kingdom of God comes into our life, the benefit of it is for us to have peace. You know? And there you will not have this peace. This kingdom of God will not fully come into our life if we do not grow in faith. You know, I always tell people, like when I see people, maybe visit them at home, I always tell them, I don't know how people survive in this world without faith. Because everything we do is faith. Even the mass we celebrate here, faith. Even when you stay in your home with your husband, wife, children, faith. Everything in this world is faith. I don't know how people survive with faith. And the church, in her wisdom, implanted this faith in us through the sacrament of baptism. Through the sacrament of baptism, we receive this faith as a son and daughter of God. So that is why in difficult moments, the church always calls us to remind, to, for us to remind who we are, not just by our name, but firstly, a son and daughter of God. Today, the church allows, the church wants us to be open-minded to this kingdom of God by allowing our faith to grow like the mustard seed. You know? Like mustard seed, which is the smallest of all the seed. But when it grows, it becomes so large. In the same way, the church calls us to allow our faith to grow like a mustard seed in our life. And how will this faith grow with a mustard seed? Firstly, by loving God. To love God with all our heart. We know that the greatest commandment is to love God and to love your fellow human being. So even if we do other things and you don't love God, you don't love your fellow human being. I don't know. But I know the basis is for you to love God and to love your fellow human being. And to grow in this faith, you must have to be open and feed yourself with the love of God. You know, when you love God so much, you will just be smiling. <laughs> you will just be smiling. And the only way to allow yourself to grow in the love of God is to feed yourself regularly, you know, attending Mass. When you come to Mass, you, be, you feel the presence of God. To feed, your faith, to feed yourself with the Scripture. I always tell people that when you, lead, when you read the Scripture or when you pray with the Scripture, ask yourself two questions. How would this scripture help me to love God in all my life? And how would this scripture help me to love my fellow human being? And also we should allow ourselves by receiving the sacrament of the Eucharist. One of the things the sacrament of the Eucharist does in our life is to give us the strength. The strength. You know, it helps you to carry your cross and follow Jesus. And when you love Jesus... You know, you will miss the Eucharist. You know, you remember what happened in pandemic when there was no mass. I believe all of us missed the Eucharist. Even me, I miss the Eucharist. And another way to grow in faith is to love your fellow human being. Like St. Teresa, you know, doing a little thing in an extraordinary way. You know, the little things you can do to another person can bring joy to another person. You know, whenever I visit people at home, the homebound people, when you visit them, they will call you, Father, welcome. They will give you a beautiful smile. You know, most people will tell you, oh, Father, do you know that you are, you are the only visitor I always have from month to month? You know, bringing Christ to another person. Doing those things, we think that it doesn't matter. matters a lot. And when we do those things, you will see our faith will continue to grow. Today, we know that Jesus Christ will certainly want our faith to grow. He always wants our faith to grow. Because when your faith grows, you will see yourself 
becoming a very peaceful person. You will see yourself becoming so, you know, so smiling in difficult moments. So how will you allow this faith to grow? Be attached with the things of God. Be attached by being open in your heart to love God all the days of your life. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the God of heaven, God is visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, the Son of God, the Lord 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 of God. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us call upon God our hope and our strength. Rejoice in the faith that draw us together. For our church and parish community, that our work and worship together may proclaim the kindness and faithfulness of our God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve our church as pastors and teachers, that through their ministries, the word of God may take root in our lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in government and public service, that in all laws and public policies, they may seek to uphold the sacred dignity of every man, woman, and child, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all farmers and food producers, that God will bless their labors with a bountiful harvest for the benefit of all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have dedicated themselves to the service of the poor and the oppressed, that their efforts may reap an abundant harvest of compassion and justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we ask of the Lord today? Collective and friends, that they may be flourished forever in the house of the Lord, especially Rose, Kevin, and Phil. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For what else shall we ask of the Lord today? Lord Jesus Christ, we as a family, we are here with our prayers and petitions. Please help us to grow in faith and to continue to love you all the days of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Oh, 
their brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. O God, who in the offering presented here provide for the twofold need of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacraments, grant we pray that the substance they provide may not fail us in body and in spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he provides renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering, cancel out our sin. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we are claimed. We are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to each setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this sacred mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. Giving time, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we lie from failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, the other of bishops and all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listening graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always free from sin and save from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit.
call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Oh 
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Just a moment. Um, anyone have any questions about the The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much to Father Charles for joining us this morning. Let us go to the last Thanks be to God.